In this video, I'll provide an introduction to using Vim on Oracle Linux. Vim is an advanced text editor. It is highly customizable and designed for efficient text editing. But why use Vim over other text editors? The main reason is efficiency. You can do everything in Vim using the keyboard, which means you're not wasting time moving your hand back and forth between the mouse and the keyboard. Vim has a ton of keyboard shortcuts for common tasks as well as the ability to customize and create new shortcuts. It is also widely used and widely available on numerous platforms. Vim is terminal-based, meaning it doesn't require a desktop environment to use it, so it provides a way to edit files on systems that only have a terminal interface. There is a steep learning curve with Vim, but once you're familiar with some of the basics, I hope you'll see the advantage of using it. In this video, you'll learn about normal versus insert mode, how to open, save, and close a file, move around a file efficiently and search for something, and then modify content with delete, copy, and paste. I'll be moving pretty quickly, but in the last minute of the video, I'll provide a cheat sheet so you can easily look up any commands that we cover. Let's get started. I'm in the terminal on an Oracle Linux 8 system. Vim comes pre-installed with Linux, so there's no package to install. To open a file, type vim space and then the file name. If I just start typing, thinking it's like a text editor, odds are it's going to make changes that I don't want. So if you ever find yourself in trouble, just remember escape colon q a exclamation mark. This will quit without saving changes, and now I'm back at the shell prompt. But what does escape colon q a exclamation mark do? Escape makes sure that you're in command mode. The colon is the prefix for entering command line. Q is short for quit. A stands for all buffers, meaning if you have multiple files open, it's going to close all of them, and the exclamation mark represents force, telling it to quit even if there were changes made. So why didn't typing like normal work? Well, Vim has two modes, normal mode, sometimes referred to as command mode, and insert mode. It launches in normal mode, where all the keys have a different function similar to shortcuts in other applications. Which is why, if you just start typing, you're actually telling it to perform different functions with each key that you press. The other mode is insert mode, which is used to insert text. There are several different ways to get into insert mode, but you always use escape to exit insert mode. Let's open up that file again and take a look at the modes. One of the most common ways to get into insert mode is I. So if I type I, you can see insert pop up at the bottom, indicating I'm no longer in normal mode, I'm now in insert mode. I can type as usual, so I can add text, use the arrow keys to move around, and delete content. And once I'm done, to exit insert mode, I'll hit escape. The insert indication goes away, and now we're in normal mode, where all the keys have a different function. A handy one is U, which will undo the last change. So if I type U, it'll bring back what I deleted, and U again will remove the text that I added. I can use Control R to redo and bring that text back. Once I'm done, to save the file, I'll make sure I'm in normal mode by hitting escape, then I'll use colon, w for write, and q for quit. Let's open up a longer file and take a look at how to move around. I can page forward with control F, backwards with control B. I can use the arrow keys to move around, but that's not super efficient. Instead, I can use the H, J, K, L keys, where H moves left, J moves down, K moves up, and L moves to the right. If I want to move several lines or characters at a time, I can add a number in front of any of these. So to move three lines down, I'd type 3J, 20 characters to the right would be 20L. We can also move word by word. W jumps to the beginning of the next word, W again moves to the next word, and so on. B jumps to the previous word, and E jumps to the end of the current word. Just like HJKL, I can add a number to jump several words at a time so 7w would move me 7 words forward. I can use the dollar sign to move to the end of a line, and 0 to move to the beginning. I can move to the end of the file with shift g, and back to the beginning with gg. Next, let's take a look at searching the content. To search for a word, I can use forward slash, then type whatever I'm looking for, and hit enter. It's important to note that this is case sensitive. Use n to move forward to the next instance and shift N to move back. To clear the highlights, type colon NOH. Next, let's take a look at a few of the ways to get into insert mode. Let's go to the bottom of the file with shift G, 
and add information on where this excerpt is from. If I use I to get into insert mode and start typing, I don't want that. I want it on the next line. So I'll hit escape and U to undo. Then I'll type O, which will insert a new line below the cursor. And I'll add the excerpt details here. Let's add a divider above to separate this information from the rest of the text. Just like O to insert a line below my cursor, I can use Shift O to add a line above my cursor. I'll add a bunch of dashes and then hit escape. I should probably add the author after the title, so I'll go down, then if I hit I for insert, you'll notice that it inserts before my cursor and I actually want it after. So I'll undo and instead I'll use A to append after my cursor. Now let's look at how to delete content. You may have noticed I made a mistake in the title. The M of madness should be capitalized. To correct it, I'll use B a few times to get back to the beginning of the word. To remove the character, I'll hit X, then I to enter insert mode, type the capital M, and then hit escape. Let's say I don't want this information down here, I want it at the beginning of the file instead. I can use D to delete, then D again to delete the entire line and dd again will remove the line of dashes. But like everything else, I can add a number before it to apply it to multiple lines. So I'll undo, then go up a line and use 2dd to delete both of these lines. The d command actually places the content in memory, so you can think of it more like cutting rather than deleting. So let's look at pasting the content I just cut. I'll go to the beginning of the file with gg, then use p to paste. But as you can see, it places the content after my cursor. I want it before. So I'll undo, and instead I'll use Shift P to paste it before my cursor. Now maybe I want to copy the divider and put it below the excerpt information. I'll go to the line of dashes and use Y for yank, and then Y again to yank the whole line. I'll move down and use P to paste after my cursor. I think that looks good, so let's save the file with colon WQ. That pretty much covers some of the basics when using Vim. Here's a summary of what we learned. There are two modes, normal and insert, there are multiple ways to get into insert mode, and you can use escape to exit insert mode. To save and quit, you can use colon QA exclamation mark to quit without saving anything, and colon WQ to write and quit. We learned how to move around a file efficiently with the HJKL keys, paging forward or back, and jumping to the beginning or end of a file. We learned how to move to the beginning and end of a line and jump between words. We learned how to search for content and cycle through the results. And finally, we learned how to modify text with delete or cut, copy and paste, as well as undo and redo. This really only scratches the surface of what you can do with Vim, but I hope it gives you a good jump start. Thanks for watching.